This is about giving consumers an extrinsic reason for buying what they're buying. You do not need to live in a large city to create innovative products. It's absolutely worth every penny because it makes a difference. Today on Spotlight, celebrating small businesses, a local company helping you control your home from your phone. And the world's first virtual reality, powered by your brain waves, how it helps reduce stress. Then a musician combining rap with art, why he's inspired by 70s music. But first, soap created by a mom that helps adults with intellectual disabilities. It's Sunday and you're watching Spotlight. Sammy Soap is a job creation machine for adults with intellectual disabilities disguised as a soap company. Nestled in the quaint downtown community of Kirkwood, Sammy Soap sits in an old firehouse across from the train station. One, two, three, go ahead and pull, slow, even motion. Yes. It's like a cup of coffee, you know, it's something that everybody uses every day. It's very easy to understand. It's very simple chemistry. Soap is really easy to make. Karen Copeland's son, Sam, is at the heart of this operation. I was taping it. His name is etched on every bar of soap. I like it so much. Three years ago, Sam's options were limited. My son graduated from high school in 2013 from special school district um, to an adult day health care. It was four walls no windows, no community integration uh, with other Alzheimer's patients. That's when Karen and two partners brainstormed, then launched Sammy Soap. Made using simple chemistry, essential oils, and emollients, Sammy Soap is made and packaged all by hand. And when she found the job that would allow her to work side by side with her son, Karen Copeland made another decision. It was just a no-brainer. If you're going to do it for one, you might as well do it for 30. The company made it its mission to employ adults with intellectual disabilities. Currently, half of the 14 employees here have some sort of disability. Jane Rizek is a college student who says she has some issues with focus and hearing. I guess it's like really easy to come in and just focus on one thing. Um, I mainly package the soap. They're really nice. We like talk about our lives pretty much while packaging, I guess. Yeah. I think to be in a an environment that's not sheltered and is more inclusive, everybody wants that. This is a grossly underemployed or unemployed segment of society. And they don't want to get on some bus and go to some workshop, you know, 30 miles from home. Um, you know, they want to be in the community just, just like everybody else. In fact, Sammy is pretty well known around Kirkwood. His friendly attitude also landed him a job next door as a greeter at the popular Billy G's restaurant. He's a very authentic person, so he sort of develops without notions of competitiveness or manipulation. And so all these defense mechanisms that we just sort of evolve into as a culture, they're not there. Sammy Soap is so dedicated to its all-natural promise, anyone can visit its factory during the week to see how the soap is made and hear how it's good for your skin. You don't have to put as much lotion on. It's kind to your skin. It doesn't strip you out of the oils. There's also an area where children can carve out their own soaps after touring the facility. This is about giving consumers an extrinsic reason for buying what they're buying anyway. Copeland says the location is ideal since employees can reach it by foot, train, or bus. They also work with those who need flexible hours. Do you have a favorite soap? Yes. Yeah. Which one? Chocolate. Working and earning real wages has changed her son, Sam. Copeland hopes to grow the company to impact even more lives. When we're walking around town and we're in the drugstore or the grocery store or the farmer's market, Sam knows everybody. It's like, I don't know anybody. Everybody knows Sam. So it's, it's perfect. It's what we all want for all of our kids, you know, just to feel included and have a meaningful week. I'd love to see one in every community across America and really have a brand association with making a difference. I mean, we really would like to change the world.
Follow HEC Media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If anyone told Kyle Rood or Clint Matthews they'd be flipping waffles after graduating college, they wouldn't have believed it. Why should they? I went to the University of Missouri, um, went there to be an atmospheric scientist or TV weatherman. And one day I was sitting in class and I thought, wow, these people are way more interested in weather than I am. So Matthews pursued business administration, receiving his MBA, which in a roundabout way is why he's doing this. When I graduated, that's when Kyle and I met in the biodesign program. Kyle Rood is a biomedical engineer. And Matthews was working for a company that put him in the mix with Mizzou laboratories and researchers. He had a chance to meet researchers who had invented this recipe for a high protein waffle and had told me about it and said, we've got to try these things, they, they've got to be great. And the main thing is it just increases your satiety or makes you fuller throughout the day. And if you eat about 30 grams of protein for breakfast, you will consume about 400 less calories per day. If you eat a high protein breakfast, you stay fuller longer, you eat less calories throughout the day, you have less unhealthy snacking, and even over 13 weeks their studies showed that, uh, that you can reduce your body fat percentage. So they launched Start Right Foods in St. Louis, boxing their frozen Belgium waffles to be sold in grocery stores. Starting with grocery chains in Missouri and Illinois, their goal is for Start Right to become a household name nationwide. Each waffle has 15 grams of protein. So our waffles are packed with egg and dairy protein, so they have all the essential amino acids. Really like a complete breakfast, and all you have to do is pop in the toaster because there's fruits and vegetables in the recipe, and it's a good source of fiber. So you're getting kind of all the things you need in a meal in one easy and convenient product. Registered dietitian Marilyn Tanner Blazier with Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis believes the number one skipped meal is breakfast. She says Start Right's protein and nutrients are a great option for someone on the run. You got to get the kids out the door, you got to get yourself out the door, you got to get everything together and you're racing. Why not eat a waffle that's got the protein in it? And she's a believer in the power of protein. Especially as we age. So older people that are trying to keep their muscle mass up so that they can keep their calorie burning going. Some of the recommendations out there are up to 30 grams of protein at a meal. Now that Start Right is getting on more store shelves, the entrepreneurs are offering 19 grams of protein, adding sausage and egg or turkey sausage and egg white for their new waffle sliders. For me, it's fun to not be complacent and just sitting around doing the norm and what everybody else is doing, but trying to push the boundaries and developing new things. You just never know where that spark is gonna come from. putting a human touch to everything through the vehicle of art. We give them the ability to hope. The city of Columbia, Missouri is on the move. With the continual growth of upper-level educational institutions like the University of Missouri and Columbia College paving the way for startup technology-based companies. It's the Silicon Prairie. You know, here in Missouri, we have access to the internet, just like everyone else does on the east or the west coast. You do not need to live in a large city uh, in order to create innovative products that can help people. Story Up, a small tech startup, is making big waves in the biotech and neuroscience fields with their flagship product, Helium. Helium is an interactive media channel that you power with your brain patterns and your heart rate via your wearables. So it's for areas of acute situational workplace stress, it's for the self-management of anxiety, and it allows you to see your feelings and to know that they have power to control things not only in the virtual world, but in the real world as well. We talk about how we build the product for ourselves and that's exactly what we do. We're all very passionate about it for our kind of our own reasons and it's, it's really cool. According to a July 2018 article by the CDC, 71% of adults reported at least one symptom of stress, such as a headache, 
or feeling overwhelmed or anxious in the workplace. People are wanting you know, more drugless solutions. This is an adjunctive tool. It's a self-management tool that allows the user to become more self-aware of their emotions. The Helium team conducted their first study with a group of 22 individual adults who tested with moderate to severe anxiety. They used a cap called an electroencephalograph, or EEG for short, with 20 different points to monitor brainwave activity during states of rest and when the individuals were experiencing virtual reality. The subjects experienced both environments for a total of five minutes. With the control group, the team had their subjects rest twice for five minutes to see if just the act of resting had greater or the same impact as the virtual reality group. Even though they both reported feeling better, uh, the virtual reality group was the only one that showed changes in the brain. We had uh, an experience where you were on this beautiful bluff uh, and taking in this beautiful bluff and we couldn't figure out why it was not meeting the mark on lowering that high beta activity in the brain. Well, the reason why is because some of the people were scared of heights. And so that's good to know that uh, you have to take into account the user's prior experience to how they're going to feel that piece of, of media. When I say that we design the things that help us, I, you know, I, I actually mean that wholeheartedly. So Jeff does a lot of the background to find out you know, what stimulates what portions of the brain. So that's where it really starts. So we have three published studies, one in Frontiers in Psychology, another one in the Journal of Neuroregulation, and then a third one was just recently published in the Scholarly Journal of Psychology and Behavioral Health. And what they found uh, is that helium reduced self-report anxiety quickly in as little as, you know, four minutes and it had also increased gamma asymmetry. Feelings of positivity are actually emitted from your forehead with a brain pattern called gamma asymmetry. And gamma asymmetry is associated with feelings of positivity, love, joy, or appreciation. The team is taking helium out into the field as well, working with teens at local schools to not only provide education on how the brain functions, but also to bring awareness to the importance of meditation and the impact that it has on the brain. Kids are the most fun people that I get to demo this for, and it's fascinating the way that they respond. When they first put on that headset and they just kind of gasp and they're like, this is so cool, and they spin around and they just get it. You know, I can't tell you how many people I talk to who are like, man, I did, you know, I meditated for a year before it finally clicked like that I was doing it right. And so it's really cool that our experiences give you the opportunity to make sure that, you know, what you are doing is effective. That's intense, that is intense. If you struggle with traditional meditation or you want more power steering for your traditional meditation, the brain believes what it sees. And so we, that's why we think that having these open-eyed meditations allows your mind to better remember and then go back to that place when you're getting into a stressful situation. Helium has traveled around the world, continuously studied from many different sources Helium is not only helping to combat the stress epidemic, but also furthering our understanding of the brain. Celebrating small businesses with Spotlight. Frustration with remote controls, not exactly uncommon. Barnabas Helmy has this to say about the remote. Old fashioned, I mean, it's, it's a technology that's kind of dated. He believes this is the future. You've got this amazing computer in your pocket that can do everything. So Helmy set out to build a new bridge to the future, taking the average person a step closer to smart homes. My future vision is to, to bring the smart home to people who aren't necessarily A, ready for it, or can afford it. He says it's about starting small. This size to be exact. It's called Puck. The Puck connects to the phone via Bluetooth low energy and it just takes a signal and translates that to infrared. So you know the business end of the Puck is an infrared emitter just like on a remote. You place it near the device you want to control. You can put them on as many devices as you want and you download our free app. The app itself does all the hard work. Puck is a smart universal remote control. It's for anything that uses an infrared remote from your televisions to your fireplace, even something small like a fan. His inspiration, her name? 
Bijou Rose. My daughter, when she was about two and a half, three, she was teething, and she constantly would chew on the Apple TV remote and break it. And rather than keep buying more Apple TV remotes, which were like $90 at the time, um, I just started tinkering and trying to figure out a solution. Having a background in computer science and electrical engineering, he said he got to work in his basement alongside his little inspiration. Developing this wireless infrared bridge and in time, problem solved. I was really drawn to the name Puck, not because of the shape, but because of the character from Midsummer Night's Dream, how he was kind of a disruptor in that play. Um, so that I figured, you know, if we're going to be doing something against the big dogs as a startup, Puck was a great name to use for that. And that's really where the entrepreneurial spirit comes in, because just coming up with an idea is one thing, but getting it to market is um, a huge endeavor. Part of that is the patent process. Several claims, there are about seven total. The overarching is it's a wireless Bluetooth to infrared network. Puck turned into a winning idea. In 2015, the nonprofit Arch Grants awarded Helmy's startup company from Springfield, Illinois, $50,000 to grow his company in St. Louis. Having success, he rolled out the new and improved Puck 2 with 10 times the range, better battery, and more. Puck is not just for homes, it's also for businesses or sports bars with a room full of screens and a room full of remotes. Instead of all of these, they can control the TVs using their phone. Helmy discovered another placement for Puck for people who need help. He's now working with a hospital in Atlanta to develop Puck Med, and he's using this video to let people know. That can be voice controlled with the Puck Remote app. Okay, Google. For those with severe disabilities, Helmy says Puck can be connected to technology that allows them to control their environment with their eyes and mouth. He calls it the power of Puck. So whether it's having one Puck, two Pucks, four, or more, Helmy believes Puck can help people improve and simplify their lives. HEC Media presents Talking with Authors, the podcast. Your favorite writers and genres with diverse subjects and styles, like Jenna Fisher with The Actor's Life, A Survival Guide. The book is literally about my journey from St. Louis to Hollywood. With new podcasts dropping bi-weekly, subscribe to Talking with Authors. I haven't been creating visual art as long as I've been creating music, but I've always had an eye for art. I didn't know how to use certain tools to express my ideas. So once I learn how to use those tools is when I really became like a full-fledged visual artist. I just kind of create simultaneously between the two. I'm hopping back and forth. While I create, I listen to music, whether it's, you know, some music that somebody's made or whether it's some music I've made. I grew up in Jennings, Missouri. I went to Florissant Valley Community College. I was initially interested in fashion, but they didn't have a fashion program. So I was like, uh, what am I gonna do? And I was always feeling like, okay, art seemed like a cool thing. You know, I've always had an eye for it. Yeah, I took my first art class, and it kind of the rest is history. Here I am now. I've been doing music a little bit all my life. I started doing music in about six, fifth or sixth grade. I'm so focused, whipping doses. You subscribe, honey poses. Black Moses when I vibe. I keep paint like it's ammo. I just flip a bando. I have an old soul. My first music project that I put out by myself was called Young Man Old Soul. So it was just reflecting who I am as an artist, what are my influences. Like I listened to a lot of music from the 70s, like soul R&B music. And that's because like my mom, like growing up with her, I would try to listen to rap. And it was not going. In her car, she played nothing but old school music. So I just kept that, kept that influence. And I'm still influenced by that today when I make music, when I create art.
So it's just always with me. Or whether it's a beat that I plan on writing to, you know, I just paint to it, listen to it. I may put the brush down, write something down, or I may just be freestyling while I'm painting. It's just like always at the same time. One inspires the other, the other inspires the other. The art, I can, you know, paint something and it be done right then and there. With music, sometimes I write it and then go record it, so it's like a two-step process, or sometimes I'm just in the studio and I just do it while I'm there. So my time piece Gucci, I hate how they use the term, art is so loose, now. need time to myself, so I just chill work. My style, I would say it's expressive, it's colorful, it's, um, it's reflective of me. It's somewhere secluded. I cannot go outside. Yeah, gotta secure the bag. Uh, I got your hope in the, the best piece of advice I've been given is uh, stay humble. Practicing that right now. <laughs> Happening now. Enter the mind of Da Vinci at the Science Center with replicas of his art and inventions. Tour unique teapots at Craft Alliance thanks to Exhibit Identity. Explore augmented reality art with help from your cell phone at the Luminary. Or tour St. Louis's new aquarium open every day of the year. Here's a peek inside. This 120,000 foot two story aquarium is home to 13,000 animals in more than a million gallons of water. When you first walk in, you'll notice a huge screen put there for family photo ops. Then the aquarium takes you on a journey. Historically, everyone would have come through St. Louis and specifically Union Station to take their journey west. So in the same way, we're going to take families and guests on a journey to the world's waterways. And we're going to do that through the vernacular of Union Station. The Grand Lobby features a large clock fish tank, which is meant to look like the back of the Union Station clock. Featuring discus fish, which are about dinner plate size, real colorful fish, fresh water, and then it's enhanced by this really wonderful LED uh, 4K screen overhead and there's different shows and settings and the idea is to set up this idea of hey you're at Union Station but we're in this magical space within Union Station. After the show you board the Missouri Pacific Line train. It is a virtual reality train so there are screens on the side that are going to make you think you're moving. Uh, the seats are going to give a little bit of motion but um, the train actually stays here the entire time, but you will think through the motion of the, the screens that you are moving. The train takes you to the Missouri Confluence Riverbank. You'll see lots of uh, Mississippi, Missouri uh, river type animals, everything from gar to catfish to one of my favorites, the paddlefish. Then you'll descend into the ocean deep. Shark Canyon features more than 80 sharks in a 250,000 gallon tank. And then there's the piranhas. If you are brave enough, you can get a picture with them. It's a really cool little window. It's specifically for kids at perfect height. Kids can put their head in there and feel like they're kind of in with the piranhas. Parents can be on the other side taking pictures with their kids in with the piranha tank, when in reality, they're simply just in a bubble. From jellyfish to an octopus to leafy sea dragons, the new aquarium is an underwater adventure that's open 365 days a year. It's going to be awesome. There's a surprise around every corner, so we really hope everyone can come visit. Celebrating small businesses with Spotlight. Just about a block down this country road off the main road through Waterloo, Illinois, there is a fairly new bed and breakfast being run out of this fairly old house. It is called the Seymour Inn. Not Seymour like someone's name, but Seymour as in, well, Seymour. I'll explain what that means in just a moment. But first, let's meet the staff. Hello. This is Linda, and this is Linda's coworker, Linda. Hi, everybody. Having the name Linda is not a requirement for employment here, but there is one thing that everyone who works at the Seymour must have in common, a developmental or intellectual disability. I do the cooking all the time. I just like to clean. The Seymour Inn is owned by Human Support Services. 
a private not-for-profit organization that helps the disabled in Monroe County. And what could be more helpful than finding someone a job, which is what this organization has been doing for many years. But with the Seymour Inn, they are now running their own business. It's part of a philosophy known as person-centered planning. Everybody has a gift and they all uh, have a calling or purpose. And it's really our place to find out how that person can use that gift. Our employees that work here take so much pride in the work that they do. And they really believe that, um, you know, this bed and breakfast is their bed and breakfast. The house was built in 1875. In 2018, it became the Seymour Inn. It features four bedrooms, all named for people who had something inspiring to say about the disabled, like Mr. Rogers and actor Christopher Reeve. At first I was like, uh, do we know anything about bed and breakfast? How are we gonna do this? This is something different, but it's turning out to be really nice. The home, it gets kind of bored sometimes. It makes me feel real good. They take charge. I kind of stand back and maybe give them a little direction once in a while, but they know what they're doing. And the people who stay here also know what they are doing. The Seymour Inn makes sure its guests understand in advance what the place is all about. You're going to feel good about yourself when you stay here and you get to interact with the people and you see how they care about you. Um, it's a no-brainer to me. It's a good cause for the handicap to help other people out with the achievement and goals and everything else. There are people just like you and me that have dreams and desires and gifts and they want to live those out just like you and me. They have goals that they want to achieve just like you and me. And the Seymour Inn is a place where they can do just that. So about that name. Well, the decision to call it the Seymour Inn came about at a staff meeting when someone brought in a quote from a disabled poet named Robert Hensel. There is no greater disability in society than the inability to see a person as more. And so we all loved that so much. When we did the final vote, that won. While they assumed their B&B &B would mostly get travelers looking for R&R, &R, as it turns out, what they see more of at the Seymour these days are wedding parties. And there is something about the notion of celebrating a new adventure in life that seems an apt description of what the Seymour is all about. It's getting a lot of attention, and it's the right thing to do. And when you have all those things line up, it's absolutely worth every penny and every drop of sweat and <laughs> every tear, um, because it makes a difference. Thanks for watching Spotlight. Join us again next Sunday at 9.30 a.m.